We are here at Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona, and today I'm joined by Mobile Edge X CEO Jason Hoffman. Hi, Jason. Hey, how are you? Um, Doing well. Um, Phil? Yes. <laughs> it has been an entire year since uh, the company has started. About 13 months? 13 months, yeah. That's and right. uh, so let's, let's sort of walk back to then. Um, before we start talking about the company specifically, mm -hmm. what's changed in the industry in 13 months? Uh, because I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that you guys are running a startup as fast as that goes, but you've yeah. got this industry that won't sit still either. It's a great question. I mean, when we look back the last 13 months, um, I think the, the understanding of like what, what edge is and what the use cases could be, uh, you know, how it relates to 5G, I mean, there's a, a much better understanding of that, mm -hmm. you know, in the industry. So I think we're adding, actually starting to home in on more things that we can do right now and have a better understanding of like why and why now uh, than we did a year ago. All right. And, and um, yeah, I, I totally agree. The, the, the understanding of what the edge is and where it's supposed to be, which is everywhere, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> has, has definitely uh, uh, progressed. What's, um, so what has Mobile Edge X built in that time? Because you were going to build um, a resource for application developers. Yep. What shape did that take? Um, what we've done, uh, probably, the, probably the best way to think about it, is uh, we take all the disparate infrastructure assets that exist within you know, our mobile networks today, mm -hmm. Uh, and we go and we determine what those are and we feed that into like a common infrastructure exchange. You know, no different than a stock exchange, if you will. Okay. Uh, and then we look to be like proprietary traders on top of that exchange to where we, we go and we, we do, you know, three, three basic things on there. You know, so the first one is we do on-device integrations to where when a device shows up to a network, when an application shows up that's meant to be edge-enabled, that there's an application and device triggered pull okay. of infrastructure from the cloud into the edge so that there's this very local instantiation of a back end you know, that can be there as part of a, a local game or something like that that may be multiplayer. And then when those devices and users go away, that, that use goes away and it goes back to a cloud. Okay. So we, we've shown that type of flow you know, in there. Um, it's a very demand side type view and, and we uniquely did it in the market, right? So we took that uh, live with lead customers, uh, at least in Germany back last September. Uh, and then now what we've announced recently is that you know, all the software parts of this are actually done and then we're live really with sort of a production footprint uh, you know, in, in, in the initial markets that we're, we're doing that you know, as well. Now in addition to that, application and device triggered pull and instantiation of this sort of hyper-local type, you know, back ends. Uh, we also then expose some things from a metadata perspective that are largely in these like verification type setup. So verifying location, verifying identity, verifying this person's allowed to do these things. Right, right. And then there's some other areas that you'd really sort of call the typical type of compute offload. So okay. having a back end that goes and takes care of a computationally intensive task that may be better done there versus on a device and, hmm. and so on. But Okay. And in this, you're, you're, you're the exchange, you're the place that people go and say, what's available, I need to do this, hmm. and then you find those resources, or you tell them where those resources are and you help them line those up. Yeah, or even like we, we, we sort of take both of those on right now. So okay. we, want, we wanted the developer experience to be super easy. So right. if somebody's sitting there and developing something on the Unity engine, right. you know, yeah. we just want right there in that documentation to be, you know, if Edge, then give me these types of things. Okay. So for example, we have a Unity SDK. So it means if somebody's doing like a Unity-based game, uh -huh. for example, then regardless of what device that goes on and so on, it's going to go and see if, if, if one of our Edge is available. Okay. And then if it is, that's going to trigger a bunch of, you know, sort of that type of behavior. You know, all that sort of capability in the back end is something we want to abstract away from those developers and just give them a super easy to consume, you know, type type experience, you know, right. where uh, we take care of, of, of all that stuff in the back end for them. Yeah, and then if the and then if the resources don't exist, they simply use the cloud or whatever it would normally be available on the That's network. Right. And and they, they yeah. don't have to they don't have to think through that ahead of time. It's yeah. sort of just in the development process, they can write um, for, the, for the most amount of resources. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like, it's no different than 
other types of content today where right. you know if your pipe's not fast enough you're not going to be watching 4k video but right. if it is you're going to be watching 4k video yeah you know and uh, if, if you're sitting there with a certain type of setup you'll have a second screen experience right so you know so i think i think that's one of these things where we've managed to come up with a value chain and a, and a, and a you know sort of like commercial you know structure here and a set of capabilities that is a um, realistic, pragmatic approach to actually executing on edge today, mm -hmm. you know, and in a way where uh, there's there's benefits to all of us uh, in there, and then of course it connects to the the types of things we're trying to do in the next steps. But you okay. know, sort of rolls out in that mobile-ish type way that you know when these things show up, then we get these additional benefits and so on. And um, what's the benefit for you know if if a service provider, mobile service provider is hearing this this description yeah. and says, that sounds like that would help me. That sounds like that would help people find the yeah. resources that I've spent so much money building out. Yeah. How do they work with you or how, how does that uh, uh, Well, I mean, the simple, I mean, because the, the simple setup, because again, like our, our founder is uh, Deutsche Telekom. So we were founded by a, a large operator, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and so on. So we, we enter that span that space well. And what we realized is that we had to have a like zero barrier of entry to engaging in this space. So we sat down and said, you know what? Edge is not another infrastructure silo that's got to be designed or architected. Right. But in fact, the little clouds we've been building as part of our transport transformations, the NFVI transformations, the access transformations, the digital experience transformations, but we have a bunch of these infrastructure pockets already. Mm. We need to actually bring that up into a common market. Okay. Right. Uh, and so, you know, in the operator space, you know, our, our basic story to them is, look, we're, we don't sell to you. We're not selling to you. We're, we're, we're owned by an operator. Um, we basically take your leftovers and we pay you for them. Uh, and we bring you new devices and new use cases and new stories that actually help you start monetizing. Uh, things in in ways you're not today right. and really even start really getting prepared for a lot of these future type 5g things you know right. we're just here as the charitable foundation for the, the betterment of telecom uh, you know type type sort of effort right. now we are going to take a go-to-market towards the application guys and the device guys right. but that's a global go-to-market against a global customer base right. which we always have a hard time executing on as local operators as well now, if that initial setup starts being successful and they want to go after campus deals, local things, you know, those, those sorts of uh, parts, mm -hmm. well, well, we'll help them build that, staff it, figure out sort of what to do. Mm -hmm. We'll help them do that in a realistic way, and then we'll just enable them to go off and do that. But we want to make it super simple for them. Yeah, I, it's interesting, the idea that, that um, operators, by connecting to your, your I, I don't know what to call it. Your platform? No, just, it's a, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, what would you call like an Airbnb? It's just a, it's a market. Right. It's right? a market. So, yeah. It's a market. We want to be a proprietary trader in that market. Right. We want to sort of put some capabilities in there. We want to connect supply and demand. And I mean, it's not, not terribly different than you yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, an Airbnb is an okay analogy. You, know, yeah. you just think of all this infrastructure, like apartments and right. condos and houses. Now, of course, an Airbnb has got a help help people take good pictures and right. post nice descriptions and connect them to interior designers that may make the place look nicer, mm -hmm. but they're not in that business. They're just right. making their suppliers a lot better. So we have a lot of those types of activities. Yeah. We're trying to have this nice supply in the market right. yeah. You know, yeah. to, to, to go and do that and connect it to the experiences that people want to go and do. It's not, not terribly different than you know, an Airbnb type. Type analogy. What's the what's the commercial model for for uh, for you, or is that something that that's yet uh, we to have? Develop? I mean, we look. We have very standard SaaS facing type uh, cloud services. Mm -hmm. You know, no no difference. So it's some resource per unit time to make these six API calls, and you're able to make a hundred thousand of them for a dollar. Mm -hmm. We have a portfolio of like sixteen of those. Okay. You know, and then we go and add then the sort of private edge type things where we go and deploy your own backends into that. Mm -hmm. That looks and feels like just a IaaS-ish type sort of model, but uh -huh. we try to bring it up into more per user pricing mm -hmm. type things. Because you know that way, for example, if you're a game developer, you know that you're going to have a certain cost per user. So what right. does it mean to sort of go and do that? But we want to surface it up to, to that type of thing. Right. But we do that towards uh, device makers and those application creators, very standard sort of you know SaaS resource per unit time models like yeah. that. And then on the back end, we pay according to very standard infrastructure as a service type. 
right. you know, pricing models for resources. So yeah, so on that side, you work with all the cloud providers and whoever. whoever yeah, we, we do. So right like, so if you look like in the German market, uh, we're on all the cloud availability zones and all the mobile core sites. Mm -hmm. uh, we just treat them all as the, the same. Okay. We're just sitting there and saying, because we're on the device too, we can do a predictive quality of experience end to end, because we know that. And then we'll go ahead and orchestrate all that for, for, for that on behalf of actually having a better experience on the device. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it, it makes sense. Now let's talk about what happens next. What are we looking forward to in year two? <laughs> well, so, so what, we're, what we're trying to accomplish in the, fir the first part of this is, like I said, we've, we've gone um, live with, with the uh, you know, production versions of the software in uh, a couple of our markets in Europe. Mm -hmm. What we're looking to do in the first half of this year is, is effectively complete you know, the operator side of our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're engaged with a lot of other uh, tier ones and other operators where we're, we're sort of making it super easy to, you know, get them sort of pulled up. You know, so we're trying to actually get to where uh, we have hundreds then thousands of points of presence across, you know, really good sort of coverage in that. So, okay. so look for some things that we'll hopefully be announcing, you know, mid-year around that. Uh, we're also then working very closely with the, the vendor base that's into operators, so engaged with, uh, you know, distributors and system integrators like a, a WWT, okay. uh, you know, working, uh, you know, with people like a Cisco and, and right. uh, Red Hat and, you know, these guys that we're actually using in there to make sure that uh, everything that we're doing is just embedded in that and sort of part of a normal thing. Uh, the other thing that we're, we've committed to and that we're doing next month is open sourcing all of this software, making it very unencumbered from you know, an IPR perspective so that okay. all these things flow up into that operator community we're building and they're helping them be better suppliers into you know, this type of market. Mm -hmm. And then similar thing for really expanding and blowing out all of the SDKs and developer environments we want to be in. So really what we're looking to do in that first six months is build out really sort of the capacity we need from the operators, really work with their suppliers to help them be great suppliers to us, and really sort of massively expand all the development environments that we support, mm -hmm. and be sitting here sort of mid-year and going, ah, okay, that's a much bigger edge than I thought it would be, and my God, it is, it is sort of easy you know, to use. Right. And then, you know, in the rest half of the year, heading up to the next Mobile Congress, is about to continue to expand what that services portfolio is and da -da -da like that. And then okay. just keep on going. Keep on going. <laughs> Start having pricing on the website. Right. You know, stuff like, stuff like that's that. Like, that's like, you know, real big company stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Jason, and right. uh, look forward to talking to you very soon. Thank you. Thank you.